Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Your marriage doesn't need to be perfect in order to come together. We talk a lot on the podcast about how sex should be the fruit of deep intimacy and how holy and good sex is, how sex can make you holier when spouses come together in a way that is free, total, faithful, and fruitful. And while these words are meant to challenge and encourage you in reaching toward holiness in your marriage, recently I've seen them also lead to a pendulum swing too far. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, the sex and intimacy podcast for Catholic women. My name is Ellen Holloway. I am a Catholic speaker and coach, and I am on a mission to help you enjoy and desire good, holy sex with your spouse. Today, we are talking about the messy steps of growing in holiness through your sex life. So what do I mean by a pendulum swing too far? What I mean is that There's this almost obsession and need for your marriage relationship and that particular encounter to be perfect, a need for all the messiness of your marriage to be fixed, or a need to make sure that you and your spouse are coming together in a perfectly chaste way with no hint of human failing. It might have a paralyzing effect on you and your marriage that you're afraid to come together in this holy and vulnerable act because you know you can't do so perfectly. But coming together perfectly is not necessary, nor is it even possible. Being human and being in relationship is messy. The only way toward perfection is through trying and ultimately failing. You don't get good at something until you've done it a lot. You won't get good at having holy sex until you've tried a lot. Look at any number of the saints. Their lives were not perfect, but once they started following God, their steps, even though messy, were in the right direction. They still failed because they were human. Look, You won't get holy by willing yourself to be holy. Your relationship won't be fixed by willing it to be instantly fixed. Your sex life won't be the ideal by just flipping a switch. These things take time. Healing takes time. Learning about each other takes time. Growing in holiness takes practice. Fixing a relationship takes work. Developing a great sex life takes practice. None of these things will get fixed if you don't actually take the messy steps. Let me tell you about Mary. Mary took my course on orgasms and reached out to me after taking the course with lots of questions. She was asking a lot of specifics about exactly what she needed to tell her husband and what was going to be the secret sauce to getting her to orgasm. I answered her questions, but I ultimately told her that the path to orgasm is through trial and error. Every single body is different, and while general knowledge about female anatomy and how an orgasm works is extremely helpful in a situation like Mary's, where she had never experienced an orgasm, there's no secret sauce or list of exactly how to do it because it's different for every woman. Mary and her husband needed to take messy action and try something. If it worked, awesome. If it didn't, they got to try something else. This same principle applies to basically every situation with sex and intimacy. We can't work it out without messy steps. You learn to read by reading. You learn to speak by speaking. You learn to love by loving. In the same vein, you learn to allow sex to be a prayer by taking the messy step of actually trying to allow sex to be a prayer. And then you try again and you get better. You learn to be a gift of self by offering as much of yourself as you can. And next time you offer a little bit more and more and more. Now, Of course, if your marriage and sex life has serious problems, I am not advocating for allowing inappropriate or abusive behavior. I'm definitely not advocating for you to intentionally sin in your sex life because you haven't worked something out yet. 
This is not me saying that because you and your spouse have not worked out your differences in family planning intentions, that it's okay for him to use a condom or pull out. That's definitely not at all what I'm saying. This is also not me saying that things like oral stimulation or manual stimulation can be a replacement for intercourse simply because intercourse is hard right now or off the table. Those messy steps I'm talking about, yes, they are messy, but they need to be in the right direction. Those messy steps need to be pointed toward God and holiness, not toward selfishness. But you're not going to get to God without that messy action, without those steps. So will you misstep? Almost definitely. Will you fail? Probably. Will you grow in holiness and learn to love your spouse more fully? If you're trying, then absolutely. But also, your marriage and relationship doesn't have to be perfect to allow sex into your life. No, sex should not be the glue that holds a marriage together, but sex does have a wonderful bonding effect that can help a couple continue to grow in relationship with each other, especially when that couple is open to receiving the graces that flow through the gift of sex within a sacramental marriage. The key here is openness. Openness to the graces of the sacrament of marriage. Sex is the conduit through which the grace of God can flow into a marriage most efficaciously. So it's definitely worth doing, even if your marriage and your relationship isn't perfect. Before we get to the rest of the episode, I have a question for you. Is sexual pleasure something that seems just out of grasp or maybe something you've never or rarely actually experienced? Sexual pleasure and orgasm in particular is something that a lot of Catholic women struggle with. Whether it's because of a misunderstanding of the point of sexual pleasure and God's design for it, or a lifetime of suppressing anything to do with sex because it was bad or dirty, maybe shame from past sexual experiences, or maybe just that no one ever stopped to walk you through an in-depth anatomical diagram and tell you about how female pleasure works. Whatever it is, orgasm is a confusing jumble of anatomy, mindset, partner dynamics, and a lot more. And it's not something that you want to Google because you never know what you're going to come across on the internet. And sifting through secular crap is just not something you have time for. That is why I created the Orgasm Course for Catholic Women. This course walks you through everything from anatomy to mindset to theology to the partner aspect of sex and orgasm. And it is all deeply rooted in Catholic truth. There is nowhere else that you can get all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff. Check out the Orgasm Course for Catholic Women at vinesandfullbloom.com slash orgasm, or click the link in the show notes. Let me tell you another story. We're going to talk about Mark and Teresa. Mark has a history of lustful thoughts and lustful intentions for initiating sex within his marriage. Much of this stemmed from viewing pornography in his young adult life. He is very aware of this problem, and he works on it daily in his prayer life, asking God to purify his desires. Teresa also knows that he has this history of lustful behavior, and there's a lot of messiness in their past. For a while, while Mark was doing some work with a spiritual director, Teresa and Mark chose to remain abstinent to help Mark identify the difference between lust and holy desire. Mark has come a long way, and through the advice of his spiritual director, Mark and Teresa have decided to add sex back into their relationship. Mark isn't perfect. He isn't totally healed, but he's trying. There is a history of pain and hurt between Mark and Teresa. But simply because Mark is not perfectly chaste in his desire of his wife doesn't mean that sex should be entirely avoided. What it really means is that Mark and Teresa both need to be discerning of each opportunity to come together and recognize that God is stronger than sin. Teresa has an opportunity to trust that her husband is trying hard to focus on holy desire rather than lust. She has an opportunity to realize that her husband has made great strides toward a more holy view of sex and sexual pleasure. And she has an opportunity to be open to her husband and be open to the grace of God. That trust can be pretty scary, especially if there's a history of deep hurt and pain. 
But that trust, it isn't a blind trust. That trust is something that is built on mutual work. So whether your story is very similar to Mark and Teresa, or it's something different altogether, we all have messiness and brokenness in our sexual relationship. But just because something is messy doesn't mean it's all bad. But it takes prayer, it takes communication, it takes hard work, and it takes trust. And that trust is the hardest part. Take some time after listening to this episode, just press pause, don't listen to another one, and just pray and think about what you need to help you trust your spouse more. Is it conversation? Is it counseling? Maybe you'd like to chat with me in coaching. Bring this to God. Because you and me both, we can definitely use more trust in our relationships. And that greater trust will lead you to even greater sex. I promise. So in conclusion, don't let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. (laughs) Don't let the ideal, don't let the perfect relationship, the perfect marriage what you hope your marriage to eventually be. Don't let that be a stumbling block for you and your spouse to try. Don't let the idea of a perfect sex life stop you from engaging in and enjoying the act with your spouse. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. 